Hi and welcome to a Malifaux battle report with Reva versus the Dreamer. Now normally I'm uploading in stop motion with the narrating models instead. But I've been on a vacation and I played in a local game store. So this is just single photos with me narrating instead. But don't worry, work in progress is taking place. This is currently the Malifaux match battle report I'm working on in stop motion and it will be ready if everything is going according to schedule at the last Sunday of the next month. The goal is to have a Manifold battle report at the end of the last Sunday of every month with this kind of uh, look. Oh uh, no, that's it, no more spoilers. But back to Reva versus the Dreamer. We're going for corner deployment with carve a path you can see web tokens placed on the battlefield those are the markers we're gonna push forward and this is how the reva is deployed with her crew anna lovelace you can see her here she's a proxy she's on a 40 millimeter base same thing with asura rotten also on a 50 millimeter base proxy Reva wins the initiative and forces the Dreamer to activate first. The Master, the boy, activates first and summons a Alp in Buried. Bonus action Bad Dreams to push a lot of models to inches and give them shielded. Second action Walk. It is a little bit blurry, but this was a stressful thing to do playing and photographing at the same time. He focus. Lamp light activates and two walk actions. Copelius activates, first action, bonus action, fright and reminder, pushing this thing. Second action, walk and interact with the marker, pushing the scheme strategy marker forward. Second lamp light activates, two actions for walk, running around in the forest. Insidious nightmare activates, bonus action, lucid dream. These are the cards he finds from using the bonus action. Drops this two into exile. First action, walk. And then he interacts with the strategy marker, pushing it forward. Big bird activates. Fly out of the forest. And then another walk action. And then summons a zombie and some coffin markers. Serena Bowman activates. First action, walk. And then twist reality, shooting at the summoned zombie, dealing 2 damage to it. The dice indicates how much life le left on the model. But she also got the hole in the world and teleports the zombie away to this position. Vincent St. Clair activates. Walk, interact, pushing the strategy marker forward. Mysterious Effigy activates, first action walk and last action pushing the strategy marker forward. She, it has a bonus action but it doesn't really matter. Asura Rotten activates, first action walk and last action summoning a zombie. Cheating fate for a success. Trying to use her bonus action reanimate but fails, flips a 1, doesn't cheat fate to gain a success on this one. It is a little bit crowded. That uh, model is really big, but the teddy activates and two walk actions. This is currently how the models are positioning themselves towards each other. This lamp pad activates. Moving through the forest and then interacting with the strategy marker. Lord Chompebits activates two walk actions running a long distance. Lord Chompebits also uses his bonus action and plays another 2 in the removed from game pile. Reva activates. She makes 2 walk actions. And a last action focus. Stitch together activates. And makes an aggressive 2 walk actions up to almost the center of the battlefield. That little black dot right there, that is the center of the battlefield. I didn't tell you what schemes were chosen, but feel free to guess. And last it uses its bonus action to place this 4 into the removed from game cards pile. Anna Lovelace activates, first action walking into the forest. 
focus. These green rubber bands marks focus. And then this little creature activates uh, staying buried. And that ends round one. On round two, the dreamer, the nightmare crew wins the initiative flip and forces the luminary to activate first, activating this corpse candle. It makes two, or actually a charge action into Teddy. But Teddy is just too terrifying and the attack fails. The dreamer activates. He flips an 11 and the correct suit to summon this insidious madness in buried mode. He then shoots at the corpse candle, killing it. When it dies, it drops a peer marker. And when Reva sees this peer marker being dropped, she can push the teddy. So pushing teddy a little bit away, out of charge distance. Last action for the dreamer, walk and then using his bonus ability, flipping a red joker, to push models to inches and give them shielded. This corpse candle activates and charge the stitch together. Attacking it. But the attack miss. This insidious nightmare activates. Bonus action, flipping these cards and collecting this 12 to the re removed from game pile. First normal action, walk. Second action, interact with the strategy marker, pushing it through this Peer marker, removing the peer marker from the game. Anna Lovelace activates. She's using remote detonation on this corpse candle. Pushing it first here and then. On death dropping a peer marker and moving models into the peer marker because of Reva. Then she walks and focus. Green rubber bands marks much focus she has. She has two. Stitch together activates and walks out of the peer marker and then shoots at the big bird. However, the stitch together fails the flip and the big bird wins and stitch together takes some damage. Mindless zombie activates walk action and then interact action with the strategy marker. Okay, so I actually want to say something here. Asura Rotten. Friendly mindless zombie models within loss ignore insignificant ability during their activation. And when you read the Kara Path rules, there's nothing saying that a summoned model wouldn't be able to actually interact with the strategy marker. However, in the rules of the big rulebook, there's actually something saying that summoned model can never ever, however, somehow activate or interact with the strategy a main strategy so to say. So whatever happened that you see here is actually illegal. Uh, figure that out later. Lord Chompabits activates. First action walk. He's a very big model. Very very big model. And last action charge the big bird. But the big bird flips better and Lord Chompabits bits miss. Time for a cool trick. This mindless zombie activates and charges Reva attacking her. Reva relents, takes damage, but will sacrifice this mindless zombie. When she does, she kills it. This will trigger and drop a peer marker. This will trigger her special ability to push models, and she can push Lord Shumpabits out of combat, away from the big bird. Teddy activates first action walk, and then charge the mindless zombie, <laughs> killing it. Now Reva is unprotected. Teddy discards a card to Flurry to attack again. <laughs> Reva uses soul stones but ends up taking some damage anyways. Big Bird activates and shoots at the two guys here. Shoot again. Dealing a lot of damage, poison and injured to the both of them with its splash attack. Lord Chompabits currently has 4 life and burning 3. This means that if Reva has the correct cards in her hand, she could activate and kill Lord Chompabits with her one-shot trick. So therefore we need to heal him up. Sierra Bowman activates, walks and flips a black joker trying to heal Lord Chompabits. Now we're in the danger zone. As Lord Chompabits is an easy kill for Reva potentially. 
last action with Sarah Bowman, she interacts and push the strategy marker forward. And this removes the peer marker. The peer marker was actually needed to make sure that Lord Chompabits actually dies from this. But uh, yeah, peer marker gone. But there are more tricks. This Lampad activates. First action, walk and charge. And then attack on Lord Chompabits and killing Lord Chompabits. However, it would have been better if Reva would have been the one to kill Lord Chompabits, because in that case, we would have summoned a new Lampad. Still, however, Lord Chompabits is dead. With a newly dropped peer marker when Lampad kills things, we're pushing Teddy in to the peer marker. Mysterious Effigy activates, walk and interact with the strategy pushing it forward. Asura Rotten activates, walk and then summon a mindless zombie. But once again she fails to make her bonus action to make it take an action. Copellus activates, frightened reminder, pushing the mysterious effigy a little bit forward and then walk and shoot the newly summoned mindless zombie. The mindless zombie fails the willpower test on this shoot attack and the alp that had been summoned before emerges. And when it emerges, it can actually deal some damage to surrounding models it comes into contact with. Reva activates, and you don't see this that often. She attacks, charges Teddy. It might look strange, but her attack actually delivers two burning on just a hit. Insidious Madness from Buried activates. And he gives Reva distracted and also Big Bird distracted. These black rubber bands marks how much distracted you have. And that ends round two. This is currently how models are placed on the battlefield. And here at the end of this round you can see that this strategy marker have been pushed across the battlefield which means that Nightmare gains a victory point. The Dreamer wins the initiative by cheating in a 13. Sarah Bowman activates first. First action, bonus action, painkillers on Teddy, success, healing Teddy, but also removing and ending the condition of burning. Teddy is no longer burning and that's very important because otherwise Reva could one-shot Teddy. She then attacks Reva and flips a red joker, however, sadly, she flips a black joker on damage, so even though she flips a red joker on hit, Black Yoker on damage equals no damage on Reva from Cerebowman's shooting attack. Last action, she's interacting with Reva's strategy marker, pushing it backwards into the peer marker, destroying the peer marker. That was very key for Reva to make sure that Teddy gains some burning. Big Bird activates, summon a mindless zombie next to Reva protecting her if she would take damage from Teddy. Interact action on the strategy marker, pushing it here and removing the corpse marker in the process. Stitch together activates first action walk and then gamble with your life shooting and killing the mindless zombie and now once again Reva is unprotected. However, Reva activates and when she activates, she gets to summon a corpse candle. And now she is protected again. She attacks Teddy. This consumes her distracted as she has to choose the five, missing the attack on Teddy. Attack again. This time it is a hit and when she hits, she gets to drop a peer marker on Teddy with the correct trigger. And when the peer marker drops, she gets to push models a little bit around. So Teddy, Corpse, Candle and the Lampad are all moved around in the peer marker, taking damage, being healed because of her visions of fire. She then use Fan the Flame and push the peer marker onto Stitch together. The Dreamer activates. First action, Walk. Interact, pushing the strategy marker over the peer marker as you can see here and also over the corpse coffin marker removing both and then he summons an insidious madness in buried he currently has two insidious madness hiding in the nightmare zone lampad activates attack stitch together killing the puppet 
Attacking the teddy. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a black joker flipped by the lamp pad, so it is a miss. The insidious madness activates, walks up to this position towards this strategy marker and interacts, pushing it through, as you can see here, these two peer markers and boom, removing both. Anna Lovelace activates. She remote detonation bonus action on this corpse candle, pushing it here and kaboom, dropping a peer marker. And yeah, it's a very big match of creating peer markers and removing peer markers. When the peer marker is dropped, we get to vacuum and push models into the peer marker, giving them burning. She shoots at Teddy with her spirit barrage, killing Teddy. Across the battlefield we have this little fight going on, another insidious madness is summoned among the cluster. And then willpower tests are failed and another insidious madness is summoned or emerges from unburied among the cluster. Lots of fighting is happening, fast forwarding here, Asur Rotten takes damage down to two life remaining. But she attacks back at the Alp. Sending the Alp down to two life left. This insidious madness attacks at Asura Rotten. But the attack miss. Coppelius activates. First action walk. And dropping a ski marker at the center of the battlefield. And yes, you might have guessed it. At the end of this round, the nightmare crew is revealing leave your mark and removes this ski marker to gain a victory point. And round 2 ends. This strategy marker is across the battlefield, so Luminary gains a victory point, while this strategy marker and this strategy marker from the Nightmare crew are both across on the battlefield, and they also gain a victory point. It currently stands 3 to Nightmare and 1 to Reva. Reva wins the initiative flip with a 7 and activates Anna Lovelace first. Time to go big kaboom. With remote detonation. This blast kills the Alp and deals some damage to the other ones. Anna Lovelace then walks up to the strategy marker, interacts and push the strategy marker to this position. Removing the corpse marker in its path. Insidious Madness activates. Attacks Asura Rotten. Because of hard to kill, she survives at one life. Vincent activates. He disengages with a normal walk action because of agile. And then shoots at this Insidious Madness. Because of his exorcist trigger, he can outright insta-kill a summoned model. The Dreamer activates and summons a new model in Buried. He shoots at Asura Rotten. Asura Rotten fails the willpower test and Asura Rotten had gained a life because of the final veil. Whenever a model dies, which the summon model did, she was healed. However, she takes damage from Twisting Reality and the Insidious Madness is summoned next in base-to-base -base contact with her when she fails. Also, sadly, for the big bird, it is also summoned in combat with the big bird in base to base contact. The dreamer shoots again, but this time Asura Rotten flips a 12, while the dreamer flips a 9, and Asura Rotten dodges the shooting attack. Lampad activates and attacks Sarah Bowman, killing her. However, Demise Eternal, as you can read, once per turn after this model is killed, it may discard a card, if it does, it heals 4, so she comes back to life. But well, you can attack it again. Red Joker on hit. Killing Sarah Bowman. Insidious Madness at activates and attacks Asura Rotten. It's a very sad flip for Asura Rotten, and she dies. Second attack attacking the big bird. <laughs> Staying outside of that zero reach on the big bird so that the big bird is engaged while the big bird can't attack while the city's madness can attack. However, dealing four damage to the big bird. 
Reva is using a pass token, so Mysterious Emissary activates first action interact, pushing the strategy marker. Second action walk up to the strategy marker. The Nightmare crew is actually really close at pushing this strategy marker all the way to the enemy deployment zone. This is the enemy deployment zone. We have one more activation and then that strategy marker will be worthy of two points. Reva activates. Time for desperate measures. When she activates, she summons this corpse candle. First action, walk. Second action, charge the dreamer. She's now standing in the middle of the battlefield. Copellus takes free damage and gains burning. Reva was hoping for a mask for Peer Bloom trigger to drop a Peer marker in the middle of the battlefield here. That didn't sadly happen. Copellus activates. Attacking Reva. And Reva flips a black joker. Severe damage, taking Reva down to 3 life remaining. Copellus just snatched one of Reva's eyes. Time to go for the other eye. It is a hit and a big moderate damage, killing Reva and she dies, Copellus collecting both of her eyes. And here Reva concedes. The reason she actually did that desperate move was to get in a specific position so that this big bird could not attack and kill his own corpse candle friend triggering Reva, which is dead by now, but just showcasing an example of her ID, so that the corpse candle would drop a peer marker, which would push models out of combat, so that the big bird would no longer be in combat. Then the big bird could have potentially charged here into Capellus and summoned a mindless zombie next to Reva, so she would stay alive. Now Reva would be in the middle of the battlefield with a mindless zombie next to her, protecting her. That was my ID, I played Reva. It kind of ended in a very strange game. So the plan was to kill models, summon lamp pads and just take over with value. Sadly, we didn't get to kill them with Reva, we got to kill both the Lord Chompebits and the Teddy with the different models and then Sierra Bowman was also killed by another model. In the end, Reva wasn't able to kill a single model because of timing sequences, very detailed movements by removing the peer marker here and there. While the opponent, the Nightmare, got to summon model after model. So Reva lost the war of attrition, but she also lost the war of strategy, scheme markers basically. You see the dreamer was utilizing the strategy markers to remove the peer markers. So Reva never really get to build up the peer marker world she dreamed of. And the dreamer got to use interact actions to both proceed with his victory, gaining victory points, but also removing the peer marker. So it Making an interact action this game for the dreamer functioned like a defensive action but also a victory point action. So even though the Reva's crew was successfully killing models here and there, she was still losing in victory points and running out of ways to win the game. And she had to go on that desperate measure trying to catch up with some extreme IDs. Didn't work out.